We fired Coach Mora during that time, brought in Bobby Petrino, the total D bag, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, you can edit that's a good that way to put it. Too. And um, what was the internal reaction to Petrino leaving a note and saying he's moving so on? So Bobby Petrino left a laminated note in all of our lockers telling us that he, I don't even know what the hell it said. A couple of guys posted it on social media at the time, but I wasn't even on it then. But just a note, let us know that he's moving on and, and going to Arkansas to be the head coach there or something. And I mean, it was Bush League. It was uh, cowardly. Um, he pretty much lied to Arthur Blank's face, I think, the week prior when Arthur asked him if he was sticking around or not because the rumors were out there. Uh, so overall it was, it was a sense of relief that we'd have to deal with that guy anymore. Uh, but it was brutal as an organization to have to kind of be a bit of a laughing stock in the NFL. It was a really weird locker room too. Martin Anderson, we brought back around that time. Right. And he was like, he's never seen a locker room with so many people walking on eggshells. He'd been in 25 years in the NFL. Yeah. He'd never seen anything like it. Work done. Who hasn't, doesn't have a bad thing to say about anybody. Not a fan of Bobby Petrino. So the whole thing. It was a disaster. What is the, I guess, the traditional NFL way of a coach announcing, hey, I've been let go or I'm moving on? Or It depends on the time and place. Um, sometimes you don't get an opportunity because it happens a week or two after the season. Guys are gone. Guys have packed up and cleaned up. Their lockers aren't there. You may never hear from them. Um, other times they have an opportunity to address the team, which uh, Dan Reeves did because he got word that, Arthur Blank was going to fire him, uh, and Arthur Blank, he approached Arthur Blank. I believe this is how the story goes. Dan Reeves got word that he was going to be fired, and there was about three weeks left in the season, I think, and um, he asked Arthur Blank if that was the case, and Arthur said yes, and Arthur wanted him to finish out the season, but then Dan, had, <laughs> I guess, did not want to do that, so he walked away, and uh, it was unfortunate. I love Dan. He was a great coach, um, kept me in the league for a few years early in my career, I needed a coach like that, disciplined, old school. Um, so it was cool. It was like Chris Chandler was old at the time, football old, like 36 or 35, and I was 24 and, and um, trying to find my way. And when I heard Chris Chandler call Coach Reeves Dan, that was the first time in my life I was like, holy cow, these are like grown men talking to each other about stuff. But I was still I was still Coach Reeves all the way through. Just there's a level of respect there. But – as I grew and became closer with the coaches, like Coach Mora, he called Jim every once in a while, and Smitty, Mike Smitty, he called Smitty. Um, so you, as you get more mature and, and start treating them more as equals as opposed to, you know, up here, it's kind of fun in the NFL to figure that out. But Dan Reeves, Coach Reeves is always Coach Reeves to me. So it was Reeves, Mora, Petrino, and then Mike Smith for me over my tenure. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a blessing to, uh, I, I think, for the city of Atlanta, for the whole overall with Mike Smith and Matt Ryan. And, oh, my gosh. You know, that, that was, that was a godsend. Yeah. Have those guys to pick Smitty, go back-to-back winning seasons for the first time in, in franchise history, and then rattle off, I think, four or five um, to go to the postseason a few times. And then Matt was, Matt was special, too. So it was a good yeah. time to be a Falcon fan, for sure.